Hello everyone, welcome to another video and yes, you are right, that is the Lomax behind me, it's in a different position. This is a Lomax video, do not adjust your sets, I'm actually doing something. Not the golf, the golf, we'll, we'll come to the golf soon, the, the Lomax first. Um, because my plan is, I'm hoping to enter race waves with this, which is in May next year. Now applications open at some point soon, they just say before the end of the year. So I want to make sure that this is ready, in case I get accepted into it. I mean I hope I do, but it's going to be pretty pointless if I don't, but anyway. Um, so I was going to make a start on like the bodywork and the thing, the holes and stuff like that, but then I realised, hang on a minute, I don't even know how much work this car needs. Um, <laughs> so instead today's video is just going to be like a, a good look around it, sort of like a everything wrong with my blah 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 videos that you see so we're actually gonna we're gonna have a look around it and make and see what it actually needs and so i can make a shopping list so i can spend too much money at the nec next weekend which is when this video is being filmed because let's face it i'm not going to edit this and get it out before the nec so you'll probably be seeing this after the nec but i will be slash was at the nec um and the auto jumble is fantastic there, so I'm going to make a list of stuff. I don't know how good it is for two CV parts. We'll find out. Um, I think there's a Lomax stand there as well, so hopefully I can chat to those guys. Um, I did last time I was there, so hopefully they're there again. And I can get some more tips now that I have it. Um, so yeah, let's, let's have a look around it. Now there are a few things that I'm already aware of, like the obvious stuff, the tyres. Um, to be fair, they actually look to be in really good condition, like there's no, they're not perished or anything like that, they don't feel hard, they're still nice and, you know, malleable, um, but they're nine years old, so I don't really want to risk it on them, maybe I'll keep them as like spares, like just to get me out of the, out of trouble, um, but the actual spare, that definitely is replacing, that is, um, where is it, oh yep, 2004, um, for those who don't know, to date attire, first two letters, letters, those are numbers K. First two numbers are the week and the second numbers are the year, so that's the twelfth week of 2004. Um, anything that's before like 2000 and whatever is a bit more difficult, but if it only has three numbers you definitely need to change them. Um, so yeah, and get the carb looked at. I've, I've tried starting it earlier, it doesn't want to go, I don't think it's um, pulling enough fuel through um, when we picked it up to collect it from my uncle's house we had to um, put some fuel in the car then eventually it went but it really does struggle to start so I think that car needs sorting out um, obviously the holes they need sorting um, new steering wheel I want because this one's a bit massive also there's a I don't know if you can see but there's quite a lot of play in it so I'd like to sort that out the gear knobs, that's in gear. A lot of play there as well. Um, maybe try and sort out this big gap I have. The bucket seats are that wide. I can't put that back on, so I'll still need to cover that up. But the handbrake doesn't work. It's seized off. You can't pull it. Um, but yeah, let's let's get the bonnet up, have a look around, have a poke, get it jacked up. This would be a lot better if I had a ramp, but I don't have access to a ramp despite the fact that I work in a garage, but that's a sore subject. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's have a good poke around and see how bad or good this really is. So I've got the bonnet up. Um, I've got my, my torch as well, so I can have a good, good poke around, so I can pretend I know what I'm doing. Um, I've inspected many, many, many vehicles in my time, but none of them have been quite as old and, well, strange as this one. <laughs> so, I mean, one thing that's immediately obvious is the cab looks brand new, and I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and I'm not sure if it's been set up properly or if it's just been plonked on. The fact that it struggles to start so much, and when it is running, when you put it under load, it bogs down sometimes. Sometimes it's fine, sometimes it really bogs down. I would guess that that needs setting up. Um, never really fiddled with carbs before, um, the shocker had some issues and I got somebody else to sort it for me, so um, I'm willing to give it a go, it can't be that hard can it? <laughs> I mean it doesn't really run now so I can't make it any worse, but yeah, um, obviously I, I realise that's the oil filler, 
Um, so I was also going to need a service. It's been stood for three years. Um, you got your plugs down there. That'll probably need doing. Um, I'm going to check valve clearances as well behind there. Maybe even get some of the uprated covers, rocker covers there. Um, I've been recommended by Ian of Hubnut to get a spare one of these because they get very hot um, and don't work. So if you carry a spare one, you can just keep swapping them. Whilst the other one cools down and then when that one gets too hot, swap the other one. So um, any other tips for 2VC based ownership are very welcome. Um, it's got air filter obviously. Um, I think down here, it's had new brake lines. I don't know if they're meant to look like that. I think I mentioned this in the first video I did on this. Um, I'm guessing so. I guess they're meant to look like that. Um, I seem to recall... Is it down here? Is it this one? No, I think it's the other side. Um, the CV boot is split. Is it? Oh, maybe not. Oh no. That's leaking a little bit of grease there. You can see. Um, so maybe we'll have a good look at these. Mind you, they don't look to be too bad. Sorry, I'm not looking through the camera. <laughs> I keep looking at the camera, I'm putting it somewhere completely different. It is a little bit perished. So I might have a good look at the um, drive shafts, but yeah, that... I could just get you in there. That middle bit has got some grease sticking out of it. Uh, looks like we've got an oil leak there. Like that, but we're definitely going to have to strip down the brakes. Have a look in there, see why the um, handbrake's not working. Because that is... So this funky mechanism here... Also, if anybody can recognise this gearbox, please let me know. It's a five-speed. I'm curious to know what it's out of. Um, so this funky mechanism here that goes down like that is the handbrake. Um, and it won't move at all. Thankfully it's off, but it just will not budge. So we're going to have to look at that. Um, battery clamp. The battery clamp that was on this doesn't fit in this new battery. The new battery is too tall. Um, I'm not really sure. Because it's just basically... I don't know, you can't really see, but there was two sort of long threaded bars that came up like this went across there and there was just a metal plate that clamped it down but to get underneath there you've got to rip out all the floor inside it's it's behind that wood there in fact you can see the bottom of it this bit that's sticking out here that bit that's the bottom of the battery bracket so i'd probably have to take the center console out to take that plank of mdf out to get underneath it. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how batteries are fixed in 2CVs because I'm guessing all this like bulkhead is the same as a 2CV. It looks similar to me. Um, so any any ideas for clamping the battery down would be nice. Uh, what else have we got? I think a lot of it's just like general servicing mechanically. I can say once it was running it sounded fine. Um, and it's only been sub three years so it's going to need um, a good overhaul of all the bits and bobs. Kingpins. We're told a lot about kingpins. So I'll be greasing them up, obviously. Um, mud guards. I'm not a fan of these. Sorry, Uncle Malcolm, I'm just not a fan. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to get a more streamlined version because also when you when you turn the car full lock, um, I'll try and show you one-handed. I think I've just turned my indicators on back, accident. When it's full lock, the wheel arch is putting against the body. And you're not getting the full turning circle because it's putting up against there. Not that I'm expecting this to turn on a dime, but... Um, I'd like just some thinner, more sleek mud guards. Now, a few other bits and bobs that I wanted that I've been looking at uh, the few auto jumbles I've been going to is some side mirrors because obviously I don't have any and I, some of these holes could definitely be repurposed for them but I really want the bullet style so they kind of match the headlights you can see this this curved bit I really want the bullet style mirrors but Jesus Christ they're hard to come by you can order them online but it'd be nice if I could sort of find some period ones second hand at an auto jumble if if not then I'll just have to buy them but so I need the side mirrors and the rear view mirror and also, obviously because this used to have the top on it, and used to have a windscreen and used to have wipers, I now have a defunct 
wiper switch. And I was thinking for ages, like, what can I do with that? Because people are going to think, why the hell have you got a button for wipers? And then I thought, I know. Novelty horn. So it obviously has its own horn, which... Is it going to work? <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is really loud. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell in the video, but it is really, really loud. It's a twin horn. There. Like, it's really, really loud. Which is good for a cat like this, so you can make people know you're there. So it has a normal horn, then I'm thinking novelty vintage car horn with this switch. Thoughts? I don't really care what anyone says because I'm going to do it anyway. But. So yeah, let's, uh, I've not actually had a proper look underneath this. So you will be looking at it with fresh eyes as I am. But I'm going to jack it up and see what it's like underneath. I'm, I'm hoping the chassis is good. Um... Because I'll probably be very upset if it isn't. Because that would mean welding. Um, especially if I do get into race waves. Probably not a good idea to be <laughs> racing a... Um, racing a corroded chassis on salt water. So I had a quick look underneath. And I know there's like some kind of shock absorber thing here. That looks like the boot split and it's leaking. So it probably needs new ones of them. Probably got a really fancy name. I don't know. I'm not a 2CV person. But I'm trying to be. Okay, looking underneath it. Um, forgive me if that's not an official jacking point. It seemed the most solid place to stick one. Um, unfortunately, I didn't realise we don't have any axle stands that are free here because the panda in the corner over there is using them all. <laughs> um, I thought we had some more, but I can't seem to find them. So I will not be going underneath this today. Um, we'll just be admiring it from the outside. Um, but I'm quite pleased to say that it actually looks out just by myself pretty solid uh, got a nice little oil leak there it's just underseal really isn't it it's just like self undersealing but yeah these are the little shockers that I was on about it seems like the bush is a bit perished there um, but yeah this is quite fascinating I've never seen the underneath of a 2CV this is quite fascinating such quirky little things I'm not entirely sure where the oil leak's coming from. Looks like more gearbox, that one. Um, but looks like possibly one from the front as well. Sump plug, maybe. Um, but yeah, this is... It's a shame I can't go underneath, really, because... It'd be nice to see more of it. For example, what the hell is this? It's got... Is it just a suspension thing? <laughs> Probably should have done some research into this, but no. <laughs> if it's not a van or an old VW, I've got no idea. Yeah, I think it's going to need new ones of these shocker thingies. This one looks like it might have been leaking. And also the bushes are a bit perished there. Um, like, what the hell is that? Massive cylinder thing. Is that part of the suspension? Is that, like, oil-filled? This is fascinating. So, going down to the back now. Looks like we've been laying frame. Hell yeah, dudes. Imagine bobbing out in this. God, it's terrifying. Um, another shock absorber-looking thing. Um, the rubber's pretty much gone from that. Um... Got brake lines, they've they've all been done. Not sorry, I'm keep <laughs> keep not looking through the camera, I need to keep looking through the camera because I'm just pointing at you any which way. Um Yeah. What's going on here? That's the rear. I think it's yeah, it's having you had your lines all the way through actually. Which is nice. Saved me a job. Um ooh, this is looking crunchy. Only surface rust though, doesn't like anything that's got any holes in it or out like that. That, ooh, is that? Is that brake pipe meant to go like that, guys? 2CV people, is that meant to look like that or is that a bit dodgy? Um, also, what is that? It's like some kind of. I don't know. Learning is fun. Yeah, we've got some like surface rust here. I know I said I wouldn't go underneath it, but I'm. My body's out of it. My arms are underneath, but my body's out on the outside. But that is just surface rust by the looks of it. 
Although it definitely needs treating if I'm going to be racing on salt. <laughs> well, yeah, that seems pretty. Sorry, I got carried away tapping. Sorry, I feel like this is a really crap video because I keep not looking through the camera and I also have no idea what I'm looking at. Um, I mean, that's that's a great drum. I know that much. That's a wheel, a tire. Mhm. Mm so yeah, I do know some things. Um, that's wiring. <laughs> Uh, ooh, scotch locks. That is nice and retro, isn't it? Um, also, I'm curious, does anybody know how easy or difficult it is to get the body off on one of these? Because I don't know whether it's worth taking the entire body off when I do the bodywork to paint it, or just paint it with it on. It was going to be too much hassle. Also, any other Lomax owners or 2CV owners out there, is it normal for your fuel tank to evaporate rapidly? Basically. Fuel evaporates like mad out of this. Oh, sorry, I'm still learning. There's a brake clamp that goes inside there. What does that do? What's this? What does that do? Also, I've no idea why we've got like a bit of a festive theme going on under here with the red and the green. Um, perhaps Santa owned this at some point. I don't know. That <laughs> brake pipe. It's not meant to look like that. It looks like it's rubbing against stuff. Where's it go? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd do brake lines in the same way the whoever did these would do it. But um oh well. Right, I've I've grabbed a, a poking stick, aka pry bar, so I can poke it through so I don't have to get underneath the car and just see. I mean, the paint's flaking off, but apart from that, it's... Oh, God. <laughs> that's the uh, brake line. That's, that's, that is rubbing against there. That can't be right. That can't be right. But yeah. Apart from the questionable brake pipes and the uh, fetching green paint flaking off that, she is pretty solid. good. I was worried we had to do some welding but it seems pretty. Cause I'm not I'm not just tapping, I'm like I'm whacking. I am whacking. It seems alright. So look at the other side. More things I don't know what they are. Have a look at the other side now. Um yep that oil leak's still there. Uh, <laughs> yeah I think it's the sump plug for the front the engine oil leak. I'm guessing this one's gearbox. Um, but I mean, you you kind of want a little bit of an oily, don't you? You know, you need some you need some under seal under there. Um, now this one is the one that I've looked at before. This is pretty. I think this is pretty goosed. Um, whatever shocker device, shock absorbing device this is. So definitely think we'll replace these. Um, but like this rod here, what is that? So what is that? No idea. Um, so again, this rod cable mechanism, no idea what this is. Leave your answers in the comments below. Uh, <laughs> not a clue. Um, but yeah, new one of these is needed. Um, oh god. All the stuff that came off it then. But I don't keep saying to get a new exhaust, but I quite like how rough this one is. It's um, it's quite endearing, really, with the uh, heat wrap at the back there. So I might keep it for a bit, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe paint it so it's a bit less rusty, paint it black or something. As Mick Jagger would say. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's not really much to look at, really, is there? Like, the whole section is just a big rectangle. Is there th other things that I'm missing? Most likely, yes. In fact, something I didn't do on the other side. Let's check for playing the wheel. Should we see how bad the kingpins really are? Wish I could set you up somewhere to see. I'll rest you against the trolley jack. Oh, that is. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, is that. That's playing the rack, actually. Well, they would have a steering rack, a steering device. 
Or is it kingpins? It's probably kingpins, isn't it? That's quite, <laughs> that's quite a lot of play. Is that in the kingpins? I don't think it is. The thing is, though, because these garish freaking mud guards, I can't check the up and down plate very well. That's that's more in the steering there. I mean, obviously, it's a two CV based vehicle. We're gonna have to do something with the kingpins. We all know this. But yeah, that seems to be more in the steering there. Hmm. Okay, so look at the back, and it's different to the side. There's a shock absorber on that side. But there's this on this side. Is this normal? What's going on here? I'm confused. Slightly scared. Um, I, th I was expecting to see another shock absorber here and there isn't one. There's this. Probably should have done some research on 2CV suspension before I did this video or before I even got this car, but that seems like somebody be organised and we all know that's not me um so yeah oh some lovely marks here where it's been oh in fact I know what that's probably from that's from when I pulled it out of the garage at my uncle's house because they've got like a driveway that steps down into next door so there's like two driveways next to each other which is like this demonstration I'm doing imagine my fingers and then what their driveway is here and the next door driveway is like that and I just went bonk straight off it um, so that's probably what that is. <laughs> we can uh, sand that down and paint it. Because um, I'm planning on respraying all of this. I don't know why I'm talking to you on the floor. It's quite comfortable down here. Um, myself with an aerosol. I'm not going to. I'm not aiming for concourse or, you know, mint or anything like that with this. This is firmly homemade vibes. It's a kit car. It's homemade. It's staying homemade. I'm not chasing perfection with this at all. Um, I, re I, just, I really love this exhaust. I love how just rough it is. Um, anyway, probably going to respray the, the wheels. It's a little bit less rusty, I guess. Well, let me just paint that one because you can't see it. It all looks in pretty decent there. We've got some surface rust in places, but we can sort that out. Um, I'll need a ramp for that. So I'm not sure where I'm going to bag a ramp from. Um, kind of hoping I can sweet talk Jodie from Auto last to let me do the, the rust proofing on this because I'm definitely going to get it MOT'd with her because she does. Is that leaking fuel? That is leaking fuel. Oh. My uh, fuel is leaking. So that's something to sort out. It's probably because it's jacked up. But the fuel for the next leaking. Oh, the green thing's the fuel tank. Right. Oh, I'm with you now. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is not sealed at all. It just evaporates. And it's not leaking now, it's jacked up. So we'll definitely have a look at the fuel filler neck. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just a bit of rubber hose with a Jubilee clip. I feel like I smell petrol. Anyway, I better get this off the jacks before it leaks any more out. Um, anything else with the interior that I wanted? Um, I w I'm contemplating the idea of harnesses. I know it's overkill. But my mum has worked for TRS for years and I've never had a car that's had harnesses in it. And I've always wanted a car with harnesses in it. So I'm thinking of putting them in this. Because let's face it, I don't need to lean forward to look around. There's no A pillars or B pillars in the way. I can just look around when I'm pulling out. Yeah, there's a new steering wheel. I have been looking at the Momo Proto Tipo Heritage line, but they are quite pricey. But again, it's a safety device really, isn't it? You don't want a, a steering wheel that's going to fall apart in your hands. Although, to be fair, if I do get into any accidents with this, I don't think much is going to survive anyway. But we won't think about that. Plus, it's massive. It's huge. It sticks out loads from, <laughs> from there. Now that there's no roof on it, it looks a bit weird. So I'm thinking a smaller steering wheel, a black one. Um, a nice gear knob. But yeah, oh, and a, a cover to go over the top. Because, let's face it. We're in the UK, it's currently absolutely chucking it down. It is going to be out in the rain. Um, one of the kinds that you can like zip off so the passenger side is all right and then the driver will just wear a coat, I guess. So I'm thinking if the cover comes around and maybe have something like that that just protects that bit. I was thinking to get my mum to make that because she's, like I say, she works at TRS. She's a very good sewing machinist. She can do the 
sewing things. I did not inherit her sewing skills whatsoever. Um, my year nine design and technology teacher can vouch for that when we were making pillowcases and I managed to sew mine to the sewing machine somehow. It got all mangled up and became one with the sewing machine. She got very mad at me thinking I was taking the mick. I was not. I'm just that useless. So this is the list so far. I did think about writing a list and I was actually going to bring a notepad and write a proper list down, but um, I didn't. And I was like, I put it in my notes and I have it with me at all times. So this time we've got, we've got so far, we've got the bodywork, the various holes. I'm going to do a respray with it because it's gone all crazed. Uh, needs new tyres, needs a cab setting up. Needs a full service of all that stuff. Need a battery clamp sawing. Need to sort out the brakes. Um, just give them a good overhaul. Check all the shoes, drums, wheel cylinders. I can rebuild wheel cylinders now that I went to the Heritage Schools Academy. Um, excited to put those skills to use. Even if they don't need rebuilding, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so I'm the handbrake lever's not working. The drive shafts. Probably give them a rebuild. I rebuilt the shortcut drive shafts, so I'm used to doing stupid, dirty CV work. Yep. Steering wheel, playing the steering column, figuring that out. Getting all funky on for lols. I can't pronounce that word, but the cover, <laughs> wing mirrors, bullet type, rear view mirror, what else? Oh, suspension parts. This is going to be weird. I'm going to be typing whilst looking through a camera. So we've got suspension. That's, that's not suspension, is it? That's not suspension. Suspension. Eh. Parts. This is, <laughs> this is really difficult. Oh God. Oh God. Oh geez. I'm going to put this in all caps. Kingpins, not kingpings, kingpings, kingpins, two CV things, two CV also no, um, what else did we look at, oh yeah, rust proofing, nope, nope, rust proofing and the fuel leak that we found as well, fuel leak from filler. Um, if anyone has any suggestions of any ways that I can seal the fuel tank a bit better so it doesn't evaporate all my fuel, that'd be nice. Um, there's probably stuff I'm missing, but I've got a nice list going now. Um, I'll try and have a look for a few bits and bobs at NEC. Um, suggestions for best places to buy two CV parts in the comments would be nice as well. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like the stuff I'm missing, there probably is. I'll be watching this back and adding more stuff to the list. I've gone until May next year before I race the waves. If I get in. I hope I do. This would be very awkward if I don't. Oh look, I've been looking at those steering wheels. They're quite expensive. Yep. So there we have it. Um, a quick look around. This was actually quite a lot shorter than I thought it would be. But when you actually look around it, there's not really much to it. Um, that's the beauty of old cars. So, oh, that moves. Right, okay. Um... So we've got a nice list together now. There's probably more stuff I'm missing. Oh yeah, coil. Spare coil. Um, one of them. But yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, it won't need too much to get it back on the road. Um, and then obviously, even though it's MOT exempt, I'm still going to get it MOT because it's just a good, good to get another pair of eyes on it. Especially when you don't have a ramp and you can't look at it and look around it properly. So now that the show season's pretty much over, like I said, we've got the NEC next week and then that's it. That is it. Because I've just been so busy this year. I bet everybody is absolutely sick of the sight of me in the Shroko. And I'm still going to be in everyone's face at the NEC. Because on Sunday I'm going to be talking on the stage as well. <laughs> so I'm going to be like, oh god, it's not her again. Wheeling her out again. Bloody bright young spark. Right, we'll be like, yeah. I feel like I've been everywhere. I've been to Bista three times this year. I've been everywhere. So it's been quite the year for me in Sylvester. So... We'll get a nice rest and then we can finally crack on with this, get this ready. And then the golf. Um, okay, I'm going to focus on this first. I was actually going to sort of try and balance both, but I was like, it's probably not a good idea to do that. We're just going to focus on the Lomax. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's been a long time since I've had like a weekend at the unit just tinkering because I've just been doing so many show things. So I'm, I'm looking forward to just cracking on um, as much as my undiagnosed ADHD will let me. Um, but yeah, I really want to sort of get some good YouTube videos out about this, get a good series going, you know, and I just have some fun with it because I have never worked on anything like this, as you can probably tell, because I don't know what anything is. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, 
like I say, more videos coming on the Lomax. Um, please, please, please give me any and all advice you have for 2CV slash kit car ownership. Any tips and tricks, any best places to get parts, anything that I've missed, because there will, probably will be loads that I've missed um, that you think is worth checking. Best places to get wing mirrors if I can't find any. If you have any if you have any old bits that you don't need anymore in your shed, I will buy them off you. Please let me know. Um, anything that you think will be useful for this, feel free to let me know. Also, I've been kind of thinking, I don't know whether to or not start a Patreon if people want to contribute to my tomfoolery. I don't know if I'm big enough for that yet. I don't know. If people are interested enough, I might start one up. Or if you're all like, hell no, I ain't giving you any money. That's fair enough. I won't give me any money. Um, but I am from Yorkshire and very tight. So anyway, thank you for watching and um, I'll see you in another video where we will be tinkering with the Lomax.